Week off proved to be just what the doctor ordered for UCCS as they pulled out a win in a hard-fought game against Northern Colorado. Today, the Mountain Lions try to start a win streak for just the second time this season as CCU visits the Springs. There's no time to reflect for the visiting Cougars who were swept in four games at home by Colorado Mesa, a series that saw 83 runs scored against Colorado Christian, with the Cougars only scratching out seven runs of their own. It's a new weekend for both sides with four chances at victory in front of them, and it all starts right now. It's game one between the CCU Cougars and UCCS Mountain Lions. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mountain Lion Park on the north side of campus here at UCCS. Alongside Brian Geenan, I'm Jake Ross, and we'll have the action for you all day today as we're set for a doubleheader after tough weather conditions yesterday. Lots of wind here in Colorado Springs. We had to push this game one start to today, but the wind has moved on, and we are ready to go here at Mountain Lion Park. And, Brian, we talked about in the open that kind of tough series that CCU went through uh, this past weekend against Colorado Mesa. UCCS had a similar experience the week before losing a blowout game to CSU Pueblo a week ago. They bounced back, got a win this Tuesday against Northern Colorado. What's the importance of this game one in this series? Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to start hot, especially when you drop four games in a row for both teams, especially. You want to make sure that you come out first day of the doubleheader Get your pitcher going, get those bats going, and we'll see uh, We'll see you with this matchup today. Yeah, and it's going to be a marathon, not a sprint today, as you said. Because of that postponement from yesterday, we are set to have two seven-inning games today. Now, because of that postponement, we're going to have nine and seven each of these two days with another nine and seven scheduled for tomorrow. And kind of talk about the mindset change from a player of... Instead of going out, you got four days, a nine, two sevens, and a nine. Now you're, it's... it's gun and go a nine and seven each day yeah absolutely you got to make sure you're staying hydrated got to make sure you're picking up your teammates the coaches are going to make sure that they have their teams ready to go and those two days four games that's a lot to play so we'll see how the teams handle yeah for sure and we'll get you some starting lineups to start off here first the batting order for the visiting cougars Leading things off in left field, it's Frankie Schoen. Bodie Flores will be out at second base. He's batting second. Jordan Medina, the transfer from Northern Colorado, who UCCS played earlier this week, he's doing the designated hitting in the three hole. Gabe Ramos out in right field batting cleanup. Major Maiden, one of the coolest names I think I've ever seen on a roster. He's over at first base batting fifth. Luke Thompson doing the catching in the six hole. Caden Walton at short batting seventh. Russell Cruz will be at the hot corner in the eight hole. And Aaron Morgan will be rounding out the lineup. And where it started quickly is that one is slapped into right center field for a base hit. One pitch, one base runner for Colorado Christian. And we're off and running. On the bump for UCCS is number 48, Cole Phillip. Phillip in his ninth appearance. This will be his sixth game started. Looking to come back with a uh, higher ERA, but not the start he was looking for there. No, not at all. You always want to start aggressive, and that's exactly what Phillip did. I mean, he delivered a strike, and was going right after Shern, but he got the better of it as CCU firing early in this game. That one's fouled off on the first pitch to Bodie Flores, and he's behind 0-1. Get you the defensive lineup here for UCCS in just a moment, but first the 0-1. A bunt put down, a good one. Phillip will field it himself. The underhand toss will get the out at first base. Smart play by Phillip, not trying to be a hero and go to second base. The Mountain Lions get the first out. Yeah, always important to just get the outs where you can. 
like you said, not being overly aggressive, not trying to get that lead runner, but just get the out where you can. And so that will bring up Jordan Medina with one out and a runner on second base. That defensive lineup for UCCS, Hayden Iverson out in left field. A little bit of a change there for UCCS is Kit Wigington with a hand ailment. And there you'll see Iverson as he chases that one to the fence. A run will score coming around his churn and an early lead on the RBI double for CCU as they strike first. Yeah, great piece of hitting there just to turn on that one, turn it out to left field, and an early lead for CCCU here on Saturday. Yeah, and they certainly have the scouting report on Cole Phillip. He likes to be aggressive early in those counts, likes to attack hitters with early fastballs. He's been doing that, and the Cougars have just been sitting on those early fastballs as a another one seen there. That one falls inside to Gabe Ramos, 1-0. But to finish out that earlier thought, Kit Wigington has a hand ailment, so that'll put him out for today. But the rest of the lineup for UCCS, Aaron Brackle out in center field. We usually see him and Hayden Iverson kind of switch off the middle of the outfield as a back pick goes to check on Medina. He's back safely. Casey Campbell will be out in his normal position in right field. Vander Hodges at third. Ronan Hella, the freshman from Albuquerque, New Mexico, out at shortstop. McCauley Sayre is at second base with Caleb Stubbings, a sophomore from UCCS at first. That one goes into center field, a late break from Medina. The throw to third won't get there. A nice strong throw from Aaron Brackle out in center field. Not in time to get Medina moving up. Yeah, it's a tough play to make there. The uh, ball kind of popped out from the catcher there, threw down to second, and just kind of snuck by the shortstop there. Yeah, tough play for UCCS. Was an interesting kind of late decision by Tyler Richardson for the back pick to second base. I don't think the middle infielders were ready for it. And Medina stands on third. That one's a called strike on the outside half. Good comeback pitch for Phillip, who is behind 2-0. and Two one swung on and missed. Nice heater, low and away. Gets the chase, and the count evens two and two. Here comes a setup pitch. That one check swing bounced foul. So we'll do it again at two and two. Defense pretty much straight up here for UCCS both in the infield and the outfield. A little bit more shaded towards second base is Ronan Hella in the six hole. As that one, check swing, did he go? No, he did not on the check. And the count will run full. Definitely looked like the batter thought about it there, uh, but not much doing. It's always tough when you're in the 2-2 count. The payoff pitch, this one's lifted high in the air, could be playable. Over his Hodges, it's going to cheat out of play and bounce safely behind the Cougars' dugout. And the count will remain three and two. And you can see on, on the camera there, the wind is definitely blowing, although game got moot from yesterday with those super strong winds. Uh, the wind has ceased a bit, but certainly a factor today. Yeah, it's always blowing up here, kind of on this perch down below the rock. Another payoff pitch, though. That one misses outside, and... Jogging to first base with a one-out walk is Gabe Ramos. That'll bring up Major Maiden with runners on the corners for CCU. Yeah, this top of the CCU order, just all averages in the threes, 340s, 350s, certainly showing their strength here early. Philip dealing with traffic in the first inning. The first pitch to Maiden, nice heater. Right down the outside part of the plate overpowers him for strike one. Working quickly now as Phillip coming set again. He goes fastball again and lines it right into his own third base coach, just Major Maiden, not scoring any points with his coaching staff, and he's behind 0-2. 0-2 pitch again firing is made in. He 
tips that one back to the screen foul. That's some great, great pose from the uh, from the coach there down the third baseline. I mean, you played baseball. You know what it's like standing on third, line shot near you. Oh, yeah. That's why they tell you to take your lead as a base runner in foul territory. It would, would be out in that situation. Diving is Sayre, but it's up the middle for a single. Another run is in. As across comes Medina up to second base is Ramos. And the Cougars are in business here in the first inning. They're up 2-0. Three hits already early from CCCU. Only one out to show and runners already on first and second. As this one's on the round, this could be two. Taking it himself, Sarah, there's one on to first. That's a double play. It'll end the inning and the threat for CCU, but they strike pay dirt early in this one. They take a 2-0 lead to the bottom of the first inning when we return. Back here for the bottom half of the first inning at Mountain Lion Park. The Cougars out to an early 2-0 lead. And it'll set it up for Bobby Caro, who will take the mound for the Cougars. He comes in with an 11.17 ERA, a tough 0-4 decision line on his season so far. Still looking for his first win, as this is his eighth start on the season. We'll see if he can get over the hump today against UCCS. First pitch to Hayden Iverson. He checks his swing. Did he go? No, he did not. Ball one on the Mountain Lions leadoff man. And we were talking during the break, Hayden Iverson coming into this game with two home runs and only the two home runs, but both of them were at least 450 feet. And so doesn't hit him very often. When he does, he gets his pitch and demolishes it. Yeah, and he's batting a ridiculous 438 on the season as he faces the right-hander. So that one bounces in the left-hander's batter's box for ball two. The batting order for UCCS behind Iverson is McCauley Sayre in the two-hole. Casey Campbell batting third with Caleb Stubbings in the cleanup spot. The 2-1 at the plate. That one catches the corner for strike two. Tyler Richardson doing the catching for UCCS in the five hole. Vander Hodges batting sixth. 
Keegan Schultz is the designated hitter down in the seven hole. Aaron Brackle and Ronan Hella at eight and nine to round up the lineup. As this one's hit well to center field, this one's going to bounce just short of the wall. And jogging into second base with a leadoff double is Hayden Iverson. Yeah, that's his fifth double on the year. Great piece of hitting just to bounce that one off the wall. Looked like we might have gotten closer to one of those home runs we were talking about, but still a great start for the UCCS. Yeah, if he was just a little bit later on his swing and pulled that one more towards that left center field gap, the wind was blowing straight out towards that flagpole at that point. Would have helped him a little bit. It does hang up just enough to stay in the park, but a leadoff double, the Mountain Lions will certainly take it as a first pitch fastball delivered right down the outside half for strike one on Sare. Sare comes in with the 257 batting average, but seems to get the hits when they need them, and they definitely need one here to the Mountain Lions with the leadoff runner on second base in scoring position. Laura's is at second, kind of checking on Iverson as that one's a called strike on the outside half as well. And quickly behind is Sarah Owen, too. Sarah already making an impact on the defensive side with that great play to end that two-run first inning where he was able to take it himself. Yeah, Sarah is really established him, himself excuse me, in this lineup with his glove as this one's knocked into the gap in left center field. That's going to get down and bounce to the wall. Around and into score is Iverson. Back-to-back -back doubles to start the day for the Mount Lions, and they cut the lead in half. And just like you mentioned, when they need a hit, UCCS gets a big piece of hit in there from McCauley Sayre. Just kind of directing that one, getting a ton of power on it, and one hop in the wall. Unfortunately, at the Division II level, a stat that is not tracked is batting average with runners in scoring position. I'd love to see what McCauley Sayers is because whenever there's runners out there for him, he always seems to find a way to knock him in as that curveball just outside to Casey Campbell as he is ahead 1-0. and We'll get you the defensive lineup here in just a moment from CCU as we haven't had the opportunity yet with all this offense to start as that one swung through for strike one. In the outfield for the Cougars and left, it is going to be Frankie Schoen. Out in center is Aaron Morgan with Gabe Ramos in right field. Russell Cruz at the hot corner. Caden Walton at shortstop with Bodie Flores at second base. Major Maiden is the first baseman this afternoon for CCU. Behind the plate, Luke Thompson catching balls and strikes. And as we mentioned, making his eighth start on the mound, Bobby Caro still looking for the first out. One run all the way in for UCCS. The one two to Campbell. That one once again fought off out of play and we'll do it again. Yeah, Caro pitched against a ranked Colorado Mesa just about a week ago and Struggled against that team, a great team as Colorado Mesa uh, pitched four and two-thirds innings and gave up eight hits on seven runs. Looking to make a little bit more of a difference here today. Yeah, and this, this baseball squad for CCU, kind of an interesting year so far. Nova Southeastern, they played just the second game of the season, ranked 22, get a 7-6 win over that team, they lose to an 18th ranked Augusta, uh, Augustana, excuse me, University 11 to three, but then they go get a win against Armac rival, and at the time 13th ranked MSU Denver, at MSU Denver, in Denver, uh, 12 to eight. So they certainly have the talent to overcome those ranked squads, and it's just about being able to string those at-bats together and get those outs when they count as one and two still here, the pitch. And again, Casey Campbell battling, fouls it out of play. Yeah, he's put about four pitches already onto Nevada Avenue, looking to kind of direct that out. Just got to straighten it out as three home runs to his name as well for Casey Campbell, all in big moments. I think two of those three were to take the lead 
in the game in which they were hit. But here it is, two, one and two, excuse me, is that one. Strike three called on the inside corner. He locks him up with the inside fastball. And out number one is Casey Campbell. Yeah, it didn't really take a second look, and Carl just kind of placed that one perfectly to get the first out of the inning. Strikeout number one in this game for Caro. Strikeout number one we've seen from either team as Campbell goes down looking and Stubbings will come to the plate. 351 average, three home runs of his own, and certainly nothing to sneeze at in the middle of the lineup for UCCS. First pitch to him, nice fastball right down the pipe for strike one to open the at-bat. Straight up defense with the exception of Bodie Flores who is staying close to second base to hold McCauley Sayre. McCauley, excuse me, takes off for third and swipes the bag. Not often do you see runners take off for third base. This is a much easier throw for catchers, but for Morace, he's in there, his second stolen base of the season. Yeah, I got a great jump there. Like you said, he was being held the second. This one's on the ground to short. We'll get the run home doing a job. Caleb Stubbings with the sacrifice ground out. And this game is tied at two for Tyler Richardson. Yeah, Walton thought about maybe going home with it for a second and then wisely decides to get the runner going to first. We're tied up. So all square at two as each of these teams getting two runs, their first trip to the plate, first pitch to Tyler Richardson. He takes for an outside strike. and He's behind 0-1. Caro doing a good job of getting early leads in these counts against the Mountain Lion hitters. So that one's on the ground. This has eyes and gets through past a diving Walton and a two-out single. Pushes the inning to Vander Hodges. I thought we were about to see a Sports Center highlight there when I saw Walton shifting over. Great range from the shortstop, but diving play comes up just short. Yeah, you could kind of tell that he was taking a step that way. He kind of knew that Richardson was a tad early on his swing. Almost made the play, but it was through for a single instead. First pitch to Hodges. Again, catches that outside corner. The Mount Lions got to start to expect that outside fastball to open these counts now. Wind picking up here just for the moment. Still blowing right to left as common here. Mount Lion Park again, the outside fastball. Looked like maybe more of a changeup that time as it came in a little slower, but 0-2 here on Hodges with two outs in the first. The 0-2, this one's bounced just foul on the first base side. First base coach for the Mount Lions, Mike Carpenter, trying to make the play, couldn't quite get there. 0-2, the count will stay. Runner on first is Richardson, who singled with two outs. Carl gets his sign, come set. The 0-2. Strike three called again on the outside half. And down on three strikes is Hodges looking, but the Mountain Lions strike back. A pair of early hits. And timely RBIs get the Mountain Lions back even. It's tied at two as we go to the second inning.
Back here for the start of the second inning. And we'll check in here as also in action today is the Mountain Lions softball team just across the ravine here over at Mountain Lion Field. They are behind one to nothing as they take on Armac rivals in Colorado School of Mines. Two very evenly matched teams talent-wise in this Armac landscape. And UCCS, the bottom of the second, have nobody on with two outs. We'll see if they can get even later in this game. Back here at baseball, though, Caden Walton leading things off is behind one and two. It's Cole Phillip back out there for his second inning of work. One, two here, that one. Just foul out of play. We'll do it again, one and two. Walton, one of three CCCU players to appear in all games and start all games for the visitors. So that one just misses outside. Phillip trying to take one out of Caro's book there, painting the outside corner. Doesn't get it to land, and it's even at two. The 2-2 two -two there. Strike three call that time. A high off-speed pitch. Locks up Walton, and he's out number one and the first strikeout victim of Cole Phillip. Yeah, it's important to uh, make sure that you're able to have that offensive production and talk a little bit about, a little bit about being able for Phillip to have that time to relax, to reset. As this one softly hit up in the infield. Caleb Stubbings, easy play for him. Just about a step to his left with two outs. And yeah, to your point, especially up at this altitude for for pitchers it's such just a grueling task to be a starting pitcher at any level you there's a lot of expected of you you have to be able to go deep into games if you want to give your team a chance to win and especially philip who had a tough outing in the first uh inning giving up a couple of runs it's very important to be able to go in and, and kind of click that reset button in the dugout the 0-1, that one, curveball, nearly swatted, but fouled back instead. 0-2 quickly here on Cruz. Excuse me, I am a batter behind as I didn't actually record that pop out as this is Aaron Morgan, and he stays alive, still 0-2 on him. Another 0-2 on its way. Fastball in the dirt. Good block from Tyler Richardson. Loses his mask in the progress. And it's 1-2 and two now on Morgan. Working quickly out of the windup. Phillip deals again. Another curveball. This one he hung. It's hit out to right field, and it's going to bounce in front of the wall. Into the corner for Campbell, and on his way to third is Morgan, and he's going to slide in. Could have got there standing up if he wanted to, but a two-out triple turns the lineup card back over to Frankie Schoen. Yeah, that's Morgan's first triple of the year, and... Had that pitch outside and just kind of went away with it to that corner. And, man, he's got some wheels to get there to third. And, like you said, could have been standing up. Yeah, he was moving quickly, a center fielder. Certainly he can move well as that bunt placed down. Bounces foul 0-1. Looked like a safety squeeze about to be put on there by Colorado Christian. The foul ball, they'll have to try it again. Kind of tip in their hand, though. We'll see if they try and go back to it. Yeah, and Koss is not afraid to tell his players to lay down a bunt. We saw one in the first inning already. As we'll see what he decides here. The 0-1 hits him. So a hit by pitch puts runners on the corners, and he'll bring up Bodie Flores. A bit of displeasure voice there from CCC, CCU fans, excuse me. As hit by pitches has been a problem for this Mount Lion pitching staff this year. About a hit by pitch a game for UCCS. They've been pretty much averaging this season so far. First pitch to Flores is high and away. And he's ahead, oh, or excuse me, 1 and 0. Oh.
1-0 pitch, nice fastball to come back and even the count at one. So that one crosses the outside half, nicely received by Richardson behind the plate as well. Phillip checks on first as he comes set. The 1-1. Nearly a back pick there. Smartly holding on to the baseball, though, from Richardson with the runner on third as kind of taking a couple hard steps over there at first was Flores. And Phillip made sure to get fully down to the ground and completely on his face to make that throw easier for his catcher. Yeah, I think it was Phillip that got clipped as that one pump throw goes to third and a stolen base as moving up is Shern, but diving back in safely was Morgan at third base and now two runners in scoring position as Shern moves up. Yeah, it's big for CCU to take away that force at second. As the pitch back to the plate, fouled off, runs the count full at three and two. And for Phillip, it looked like he was going to glide his way through this inning, getting the first two with a relative sense of ease. A four pitch strikeout to Walton and getting Cruz to pop out on the first pitch, but he should get out of it with this. A candy hop for Sarah at second. He throws across and gets the out. A couple runners get on with a two out triple and hit by pitch. But Phillip works out of it and keeps this game tied. We're all square at two as we go to the bottom of the second. Will be the designated hitter Keegan Schultz to lead things off here for UCCS in their half of the second inning. Seven, eight, and nine do up in the Mountain Lions lineup this half inning. And again out there, Caro, see how he responds after he gave up a pair of runs himself. He delivers an inside ball to open the at bat to Keegan Schultz. Schultz batting 250 on the year, getting the DH position this afternoon. As that one's going to fall in on the inside corner, working his way back into the strike zone as Caro evens the count at one. We noticed that in the first inning right away, it was pretty obvious that that outside corner is the destination where he wants to live. Yeah, he was painting that outside pitch as that one looked like a sinker there, kind of dropped out at the end and missed the knees. So it's two and one now on Schultz, but good command of that fastball especially early in this game by Schultz a 2-1 on its way or excuse me by Caro as Schultz is the batter and that one is a called strike at the knees 2-2 two and two. Yeah, Caro's got great movement on these pitches just keeps the batters guessing till the very last second working rather quickly as well as Caro kind of gets his sign and goes a 2-2 two -two. this one High Baltimore chop up the middle, up with it. Walton throws across and gets the out. As a tough play, kind of had to hurry and time it as it came down on that high chopper. But Walton was up to the task for out number one. Now batting center fielder, number four, Aaron Brackle. So Aaron Brackle, who... 
Kind of switches off at that center fielder position, usually with Hayden Iverson getting the start today. We'll usually see him in game one, sometimes in the start of a double header like we are today, and then he'll switch off with Iverson in the later game. But now with the injury to Kit Wigington, I imagine we'll see both of them all day today as he's behind 0-1. 0-1 pitch on its way now. Nice fastball right down the middle of the plate. Fouled off into the Mountain Lions bullpen by Brackle. 0-2. And it's important, especially like now that Kit Wigington is out, it's a little bit easier. But how do you kind of maintain that focus if you're maybe not playing the first day or just not playing the first game? We'll see how the Mountain Lions defense fares as their offense certainly takes a hit with Wigington not in the lineup. This could drop in shallow center, but able to come in and make the play is Morgan as he got a good jump on it off the bat. And two up and two down here in the second inning, just like the Mount Lions did to the top, or excuse me, to the Cougars. The top half of the inning, we'll see if the Mount Lions, like the Cougars, can get some late production. First pitch to Hella, that one just outside 1-0. and Again set on the mound is Carl. The 1-0, that one inside. Pulling his hips back to get out of the way. That one was Hella. 2-0 the count now on the Mount Lions shortstop. Iverson waits on deck. Shall the inning get to him? As that one catches that inside half. Ella just a hair under 300 with his average this year. Has been a staple at shortstop. Yeah, coming in as a freshman, the second year in a row as McCauley Sayre as a freshman last year took over that starting shortstop position. Hello with a little bit more vertical size than Sayre as McCauley moves over to second base this season and a strike called and Hella will have to return. And there it is again, just kind of finding that outside corner and up behind the play degrees with him. Three and two with two outs. The payoff pitch just below the knees and that time Hella does get to jog to first base. And that will bring up Hayden Iverson in the top of the Mount Lions lineup. As you mentioned, the up hiring crew for this series, Daniel Muth behind home plate for this game one. Cameron Monaco is over at first base with Caden Gommer in the middle of the infield. He's kind of that second and third base umpire as we're rocking with three umpires this weekend as normal here in Division Two. As the wind picking up a little bit on that right to left. Caught leaning. Safe as hella. That was a close play. Looked like Caro disagreed pretty heavily there. And it's tough to tell from here, but looks like he kind of had the jump on him. Yeah, definitely leaning towards second base was hella. As that one again Catches that outside corner. The Mount Lion fans, I'm sure you could hear in our microphones, disagreeing with that one below us. 0-1. Again, leaning was Hella. Not able to handle the throw was Major Maiden over there at first. 0-1 at the plate, still on Iverson. And as a pitcher, Caro is absolutely not going to stop throwing that pitch if he's going to keep getting that call. He's been getting the call all day today, so certainly would be smart to stick with it. This one's high in the air to center field, coming on, and they lost it in the sun. It drops into score as Ronan Hella on his way to third and sliding out at third base. And that was a close play. It looked... Like Hayden Iverson had gotten under, but out is the call. 
And we are going to make our way to the third inning. The Mountain Lions, though, get the run on the play and take a 3-2 to two lead with them. Back here for the start of the third inning as the Mountain Lions get a run. Look like they may have a chance to continue the inning, but called out at third on a close play was Iverson. First pitch grounder to second is out number one as Medina trying to jump first pitch once again on Phillip. Rolls over to McCauley Sayre for out number one. And Phillip keeping the strategy, going aggressive, trying to get those that uh, early count against the hitters, but able to make contact and the fielders make a play. It's always important to stick to your game plan as a starting pitcher is that one just below the knee is called a strike. 0 and one now, and Phillip certainly doing that, sticking to the game plan for UCCS. That one bounces in one and one. That one's the lowest, or excuse me, that one's in there, two and one. Another pitch on its way. That one swung through, two and two. Ramos walked his first time on a full count as that one fought off, and the count will stay two and two. And you got it in my head early, but these black jerseys from CCU are just fantastic. I don't know if it's the sun or the field. As that one softly grounded to Caleb Stubbings at first base. He'll take it himself. And yeah, we having that conversation earlier is CCU with a good set of colors, black, powder, blue, and yellow. It's hard to make a bad looking jersey when you're work, working with those colors, but CCU always has some of the sweeter threads in the RMAC year in and year out. First pitch from Phillip on Maiden, swung through low in the zone, 0 and 1. Working quickly this time around. This one's hit well to right field. Going back, it looks like he'll have a play on it. Will Campbell. He dances around a little bit underneath it, but makes the catch a one, two, three inning for UCCS. And they'll come back up with a chance to extend their lead in the bottom of the third when we return.
It'll be McCauley Sayre to lead things off for the Mountain Lions as two, three, and four in the Mountain Lion lineup due to the plate. And they're half of the third inning. Beautiful day for baseball here. And the north end of Colorado Springs, just about 50 degrees. The sun is out, not a cloud in the sky. The wind is a little bit of factor, so bring a jacket with you if you decide to join us. But we've got two games of baseball to play today. We'd love to have you out here with us. As that one high and in on McCauley Sayers, the count even at one and one back out there on the mound. Car uh, excuse me, Caro for his third inning of work. 1-1 one, one pitch. This one's hit well into center field, making his way over and making the catch is Aaron Morgan in center field. Good piece of hitting there from McCauley Sayre. Just hung up on him a little bit, allowing Morgan to make the catch. Yeah, Sayre's been able to put a drive into two baseballs here today. Obviously, that first double out to uh, left center, put that one out to right center, but center field, they're able to range over. That'll bring up Casey Campbell, struck out looking his first time up as he takes an outside ball for the first pitch of his second plate appearance. one out. -oh. Swung on and fighting that one off on the inside heater was Campbell. The count will even. Yeah, like you mentioned, not a not many better places to watch a game on a Saturday afternoon. Feel pretty lucky to be able to watch this one overlooking Pulpit Rock. Is that one just low? And I am inclined to agree with you. Of course, we are. A view that direction is arguably better than the one you're seeing from our broadcast vantage point, but one of the most beautiful settings for baseball in the state of Colorado, in my humble opinion. Of course, like I said, I'm biased though. Right. Three and one on Campbell. It's the setup pitch. Nice inside heater. Fought off once again by Casey Campbell. The count is full. Caro set. The payoff pitch. Low fastball again, going down and fighting it off. Wasting that one to live to see another offering is Casey Campbell. Nobody on. Full count with one out here in the bottom of the third inning. Mount lines up three to two. Another payoff. This one's rocketed to right field. Does it stay fair? No. That was demolished. But unfortunately for Casey Campbell on the wrong side of the foul pole. Campbell's already got three home runs, and that easily would have been a fourth if it had stayed between the lines. Yeah, sitting on the inside fastball. But we'll do it again. 3-2 curveball, and he'll jog to first. So... No harm, no foul for Casey Campbell. Bet he wishes he was just a second later on that earlier pitch, though, as that one. That was 350, 360. I think uh, oh. Carl, Carl made the right move there, putting that pitch kind of on the outside, not letting Campbell uh, drive that one like he did the pitch before. Oh, yeah, that one was. He got all of that baseball, that's for sure. But standing on first base instead, it's Sayre's turn as this one... Just missing that one, McCauley Sarah as well as it's high out of play foul. The uh, Mountain Lion Reserves getting a lot of exercise early, tracking down some of these foul balls. Yeah, here at Mountain Lion Park, they have the red shirts man the ticketing table, and they're also part of their job description is chasing down foul balls, and they've been busy as there's typically four or five of them at the table. Right now the table is empty. Oh, that shows you how many balls they have to be running after. Always a team effort and makes a big impact when everybody on the team is staying active, staying engaged. 0-2, oh, that one outside. 
Good block behind the plate from Thompson to keep it from getting past. And one and two now on Stubbings. Caro checks over to first. Pretty conservative lead from Campbell, but as we've seen, Caro not afraid to check over. The one, two. This one straight up the middle for a base hit. Looked like he was going to try to go first to third for Casey Campbell, but he holds up at second base. And a pair of one out base runners for Tyler Richardson. Yeah, a great piece of hitting from Stubbings. Second on the team in hits this year with 33 and 94 at bats. Great average from, from Stubbings over at first. Stubbings came into the game with a five game hit streak and with that extends it out to six as that one bounces in. One and zero oh on Tyler Richardson. Richardson has struggled at times at the plate, but again, always seems to find the green grass when the moment is needed. Six RBIs for the Mount Lions catcher. One more run out there for him with Campbell in scoring position if he wants to go get him, and that one's high and in, so he will stay patient at the plate even with those runners out there, 2-0. Checking on Campbell, coming in is Flores trying to sneak. They'll go to the bag and trying to force the hand is Campbell staying put as this one's playable in foul territory over is Major Maiden making the catch. Out number two will bring up Vander Hodges. And every time you say his name, I just wanna just kind of smile to myself. There's some great names in baseball. And Major Maiden is up there. Yeah, I keep wanting to say just Maiden, but it's it doesn't do him justice just to use his last name. So you yeah. got to use both. What a great name, Major Maiden. For Hodges, his second plate appearance, that one catches the outside corner. He struck out looking on three pitches his first time up. See what he does this time around. And you see kind of two different pitching approaches. Caro a little slower and methodical. Fill up a little bit quicker and trying to attack those batters. Definitely a, a different preference from pitcher to pitcher. And we have seen at times Caro try to speed things up and get that timing off. But as you said, especially with runners on, he's been a lot more uh, deliberate in his uh Deliveries, we'll say, and he's ahead 0-2 again on Vander Hodges. Checking on second. No throw out there, the 0-2. Nice fastball right down the middle. Staying on it was Hodges. He stays alive to see another offering. I was pitching, just continues to bring me back to the new MLB rules and the pitch clock and kind of how that would be implemented this year. You already saw at the major league level, a lot of kind of growing pains to get started, but makes the game so much quicker. It does, and I heard them talking about a stat in one of the games on opening day. As this one's on the ground, this is going to get, oh, he dropped the ball. Still able to recover and get the out. We'll pick up that thought when we come back. As the end of three, and the Mount Lions take a 3-2 lead with them to the fourth. They threaten, but strand two. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention and hands-on experience,
and we'll welcome you back to Mountain Lion Park. I'm Brian Geenan, alongside me, Jake Ross, as we enter the fourth inning. And Cole Phillip back on the mound. He will face the catcher Thompson. And going back to that thought, you were talking about the pitch clock and some of the growing pains. Yeah, well, it just adds an interesting kind of strategy that has never been in baseball before. I was watching the, the very first... Uh, Excuse me, as that one's into right field for a base hit. The first uh, opening day game, as I like to on opening day, was the Yankees and Giants at, at Yankee Stadium. And uh, Garrett Cole on the mound for the Yankees, kind of not on the same page with his catcher, knew he was running out of time, called out for the mound visit, decided to burn that mound visit instead of uh, taking the, the declared ball instead. And we're seeing that a lot more in the majors this year as – that it's just a new level of the game that's never been in there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think fans will notice, especially if you're a little more casual of a fan going to those games and it's just so much quicker. And you'll see some interesting calls this year for sure. Walton lines that one up the middle. It's turned for two. A beautiful play there from the middle infield of this mountain lion defense as McCauley Sayre and Ronan Hella combined for that beautiful double play at second. Yeah, and everything had to go right there for those two as Hella with a nice step to his left to be able to get to that baseball up the middle at all. Nice flip and great reception from Sayre. That's the toughest part as we look at the replay here. You see just that early step from Hella, the flip, good turn from Sayre. Doesn't get much better than that. That'll bring up the third baseman, Cruz, flew out to Stubbings at first base in his first time around. And you've played that middle infield. How hard is that play to just grab it with the glove and flip it, step on the base, turn two? I could never make that play with just my glove. <laughs> I, like, I don't know why, but getting it out of the glove especially uh, without using your other hand is is not easy and they certainly made it look that way on that one. Two and one. So this one's fouled back. Phillip had that first batter single before getting that double play, and he's got two outs, and twos are wild here in the top of the fourth. And it'll be money time, three and two, two away. This one's lined to right field, ranging back. And Campbell will make the play to end the fourth inning here as Phillip goes one, two, three in top of four.
And we'll welcome you back as it'll be Schultz, the DH, grounded out to short his first time around. We'll lead off the bottom of the fourth as Mountain Lions have a three to two lead. This car will be back on the bump. This one's lifted to right, high, playable. And that'll be one away for Caro in the bottom of the fourth. Kind of seeing the wind come into play on that one. It looked like it was going to cheat more out to right field, but kind of curled up straight up into the air as it got up into that wind stream and made an easy play for Major Mayer over there at first base. It'll be center fielder Brackle flew out to center in the second inning as he watches strike one. And again, Caro just kind of uh, in the outside corner again and again here. Ooh, good curveball there. It's tough to tell which of these pitches catches the corner and which ones are maybe a little bit framed into that zone. Yeah, especially on those breaking balls. Always makes it a little more difficult. Fans are certainly making their opinion known here today as <laughs> is a staple across all of the sporting world, I think. And Bracco will get rung up. Yeah, he Great piece of pitching there, which will bring around Hella. Yeah, Brackle knew it right away. He kind of started taking a couple steps towards the dugout as out and was received, but a nice fastball low and in, catching that corner and locking up Brackle. Ronan Hella, his second plate appearance today, made a great play in the uh, top of the fourth there to turn two. Walked his first time around and will loop this one into left field and a nice sliding play from the left fielder. Shern gets the third out of the inning and that's one, two, three for CCU in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back with more baseball. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention, and hands-on experience, UCCF fuels success. I wanted more than a degree. So with innovative courses and affordable tuition, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. Baseball as UCCS will take the field, play a little defense here in the top of the fifth. It'll be the center fielder Morgan in the nine spot, tripled his first time around. Had some great wheels, has made some nice plays out in center as well, as Phillip will be back on the bump. This one is fouled back towards my car. Hopefully <laughs> we get a friendly bounce. Yeah, right on the uh, right on the parking lot we are. You gotta gotta park a couple rows back here at Mountain Lion Park. This one's lined just foul. And you can you can tell the veteran parents of both teams by how far back they park yep. and able to do a little more walking, but as Philip will ring up Morgan, some great pitching to start the top of the fifth. 
both of these pitchers really settling in here in the middle innings. And you see it there from Phillip. He's had good life on that curveball all day. Got nice little drop in action there. Locked up Morgan. It'll be top of the order here. As the left fielder, Shern, reached first on a single and a hit by pitch in the first and second inning, respectively, as he's ahead 2 0. Shern made a beautiful diving play and just so tough with this wind and sun shining and a lot of pressure makes a huge play to end the uh, UCCS offense. Be three and one. Sharon fouls this one back. Jake was definitely have, ready to make a play there. Would have had the play on that one. You know, once once you're in the game, <laughs> you're just always alert. Unfortunately, they had, well, maybe fortunately, they have the net right there, but. I think it's definitely for the better, but I was ready for that one. This one's lifted to right. Stubbings ranges over and will make the play for the second out of this inning. Yeah, like you mentioned, some action early in the game, and now both pitchers are really doing a great job. A couple of one, two, three innings for both sides. Yeah, and it's always good, especially from a Mount Lion standpoint, who the pitching has struggled at times and not gone very deep into games to see this, this comfortability in the middle of the game. And Stubbings will handle the can of corn to end the inning. We'll be right back with Mountain Lion offense. It'll be one, two, three for the Mountain Lions and Dave Hadjik's squad looking to start off this doubleheader with a win. Just clinging to that one run lead after we've had a couple scoreless innings here. As Caro again dealing with strike one. Both these pitchers have shown really good command, especially on those breaking balls. And you see one there as Caro's just doing the right things in the middle of this game. Iverson, two doubles already in this game. Looking to add a third, it's down 0-2. Peyton Iverson taking a page out of... Uh, Brad Madison's book for the Mount Lions. Madison not in the lineup today. He had some discomfort with, I believe it was his left shoulder, and then that bat on Tuesday came out. But he's got 40 hits on the season. Half of them are doubles. Just an unbelievable statistic. As Iverson will watch two straight balls.
Caro rings him up. More great pitching from Caro here to start the bottom of the fifth. And that'll bring up McCulley Sayre. Had a double, flew out to center, stole a base, and has scored a run this afternoon. Looking to get things started as we've been a little bit lacking in the offense category. And as a hitter, you, you see that these pitchers are starting to settle in. You got to be able to start to jump on these offerings. You know you're going to see the strikes. Got to be aggressive in the box. Sarah watches that one, and man, you cannot say enough good things about Carlos pitching here. Just continues to control the baseball. Great placement. And it's nice to see uh, when a pitcher and catcher are just kind of in unison. A previous strike, kind of a slurve action on that breaking ball out of the hand of Carl. The first time we've really seen that pitch today, he's been rocking with the curveball for the, the most part, but that one definitely had some more slide to it. One and two. Sarah will hold back for two and two. Sarah's got to be ready here, though. Two straight balls to Iverson. He came back with the ring-up fastball. See what happens here. Oh, reaches out, pokes this one. And almost <laughs> hit that beautiful dog down there. Got to be careful watching out for those foul balls. That dog is sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he did not even flinch. His owner was getting out of the way. Can't really blame him. Beautiful day watching baseball. Yeah, that's we should probably focus on the game. <laughs> two and two. Carl back for the fifth inning. This one's line foul as well. Dog is safe on this one, though. Keeping an eye out. Got to make sure he can get his beauty sleep in. Always there, battling here to start, excuse me, the second batter of the inning. And pretty much the same place. We'll see if it hits the last ball. No, not quite. As again, the reserves are <laughs> hustling. Getting their steps in. So we'll come back again with two and two. They're absolutely battling, and it's it, it does make a huge impact, especially when you when Caro's been dealing so much and being able to follow off all those pitches. Especially later in this game, as pitch scouts are starting to get up there, getting deeper into these at bats, seeing more pitches. We'll try again, <laughs> and we'll. It's starting to get a little deja vu here. Yeah, that was the same result of the last two. And a little bit of movement in CCU's bullpen. Just a little stretching for now. Carl's been solid these last couple innings. And I think I'm going to need to find a you got any more a adjectives statistic <laughs> for how many foul balls he's got in this at bat, but he's getting up there in the pitch count up into the low 80s now. He started the at bat at 70, so it's 13th pitch of the at bat upcoming. And if that goes foul, this one's in play. Oh, oh off no. the hand of the first baseman. Major Maiden unable to make the play and will go to number 14. Luckily for Major Maiden, you don't get an error when you drop a foul ball, but would have been if it was in play. Caro frustrated, obviously. He's been dealing right now. The count is still two and two if you're keeping track. <laughs> Has a little bit of space to play, but continues to throw strikes and... That one will do it. 
as Sarah is rung up after 15 pitches in the at-bat. Vaccaro gets the last laugh, strikes him out looking. That'll bring up Casey Campbell. Yeah, back-to-back -back looking strikeouts on 2-2 counts. You wouldn't think so on that at-bat to McCauley Sarah. What a battle that was. Campbell struck out looking in his first at-bat and able to reach on a walk. He's also been able to battle in the batter's box, falling off a number of pitches himself. As we'll go to 2-0. and oh. And Caro gets the call as Campbell's bat appeared to have gone around. Tough angle from back here, but it's a close one for sure. Down the line, says he went, so we'll go two and one. This one's ripped to center. Ranging back and making the play is Morgan out in center. So a long at bat this is the only highlight of the bottom of the fifth inning for UCCS. We'll be right back at Mountain Lion Park. Phillip back on the bump for UCCS, dealing a bit of a gem here as he's pitched four scoreless innings after that first two-run first. And he will face the DH, Medina, who doubled and grounded out in his first two plate appearances. That last half inning felt particularly long because of that at bat by McCauley Sarah just falling off so many pitches. As Phillip is wasting no time, two strikes. Phillip, pretty low pitch count coming into this inning, only at 59 pitches through, uh, through five innings. That's nothing to sneeze at, nice and efficient. And that's three straight strikes. Cole Phillip strutting around the mound as he has downed Medina on strikes, excuse me, and will face the right fielder, Ramos, as a second batter. Medina with a little bit of a tip of the cap to Philip there, making a deal in the cards motion as he was walking back to the dugout, kind of tell his dugout, you guys got to be ready because he is throwing strikes. Wasting no time on the bump. Ramos walked in the first inning. Grounded out in the third and goes down early 0-2. Dave Hadjik's got to be happy with Phillips' performance thus far. And that pitch catches the outside corner. And that'll be six straight strikes. As the 
Well, right-hander for the Mountain Lions is dealing in the top of the sixth. There goes the immaculate inning. Didn't want to say anything, but I there it goes. It. Yep, I was thinking it the whole time. It's one of the <laughs> one of those things in baseball you just kind of wait and feel out and that pitch. Are you going to send him to first base? Hit major maiden, great name, and we have a base runner. Pitch just kind of snuck in on the. Cougar first baseman. And we'll see in that bat from catcher Thompson grounded into a double play in the first and singled in the fourth. That hit by pitch putting Maiden on just the second base runner that CCU has had since the second inning. And it shows how well Phillip has settled into this game. So it'll be 0 and 1 to the lefty. So that pitch can't quite find the zone. That one just nicked the hand of the catcher Richardson. Runners not taking much of a lead here. Stolen base apiece for both teams this afternoon. As we'll come back on one and two against Thompson. Win still keeping the flag up, going from right to left. Sun shining, no clouds. Beautiful day. You eat some popcorn and a hot dog, and it'll be just about perfect. <laughs> it'll be the payoff pitch here in the top of six. Three and two to Thompson. Runner goes. No reason to hustle as Philip will walk Thompson over to first base and two aboard, and Dave Hadjik will come out for a word with his pitcher. No real action in the bullpen for UCCS and just a nice little conversation here. And it's important, especially for a pitcher to kind of have that chance to settle down, take a breath. And we saw it when your offense is going, you're able to kind of relax in the Keep your arm warm when you're watching, but definitely important to make sure you take a deep breath here. A couple of runners on here as well. Phillip hasn't really dealt with traffic in a couple of innings. Uh, like we said, the last base runner he saw was the one out, or excuse me, the leadoff single to Thompson, which was erased on a double play the following at bat. So see how he responds here after getting through a couple clean innings. Pitching coach for the Mount Lions. Take his time coming back to the plate. Mark Lee likes to go for his stroll. So it'll be the shortstop Walton. Struck out looking in the second inning. Grounded into that beautiful defensive double play we saw from middle infield. This one's poked to right field. Campbell won't really have to move. And that'll be the third out of the top of the six. We'll be right back with more baseball.
Welcome back to Mountain Lion Park. Bottom of six. Bit of a pitching duel this game has become. As we will see the cleanup man and first baseman for the Mountain Lions, Stubbings, who grounded out and had a single as he'll foul this first pitch away. Catcher made a nice sliding play. And we'll take you elsewhere to update you on other Mountain Lion action. Yeah, softballs, as we mentioned, also in action. Game one of that four-game series between the Ore Diggers, Colorado School Mines in town to visit the Mountain Lions. The Ore Diggers hold on to their one-run lead. It's the bottom of the seventh, the final half inning. The Mountain Lions' last chance on the softball side, I think, is to get even. 0-2, it is Lexi Wagner at the plate for UCCS. We'll let you know how that one finishes up shortly. Yesterday, Mountain Lion women's lacrosse traveled to Fort Lewis and picked up their second win of the season. Winning 16 to 10 away in Durango. First road win as well for the Mountain Lion ladies lacrosse. As we will continue to keep an eye on softball and we have a one two count here to Stubbings. This one hot shot to short. Nice play. Handled cleanly. And that'll be out number one. Nice play at shortstop by Walton. Yeah, always tough when it's hit right at you on a hop like that. Going down to a knee, nice job there by Walton, getting on the same plane as the baseball, seeing it into his glove, throwing out Stubbings for out number one. And the field here at Mountain Lion Park, a little bit different, able to kind of definitely have to play those bounces differently when you're in that middle infield. It'll be the catcher. Richardson singled in the first inning, flew out to first in the third inning, making his third appearance at the dish. That one's in there for strike two. Umpire thought about it for a beat. Richardson down early. Caro, that one's going to be strike three all day this afternoon. And Richardson goes down on strikes. Locked him up again, using that outside corner. He's been getting the call. Again, the Mountain Lions faithful here, not too happy about the decision, but it's been a strike all day. Whether you like it or not, Muth behind the plate has been consistent. So we'll see Vander Hodges. Struck out, looking in his first at bat, grounded out to second base. Looking to get anything started. By any means necessary, <laughs> it appears. Kind of stabbing at that one a little bit. <laughs> Caro, just dealing again. No movement in either bullpen, really. A couple people have made an appearance, but... Caro, just a ridiculous inning, nodding his head, strutting. And we will be right back here at Mount Lion Park.
Back here for the start of the seventh inning at Mountain Lion Park for the Cougars. It's going to be 8, 9, and 1 due up as Cole Phillip, who's only thrown 73 pitches through six innings, still out there for UCCS. This one's hit well, though, to center field. Going back, Brackle reaches up. It's off the base of the wall. It'll kick back in. And this looks like it's going to be a leadoff triple. And it is. Cruz slides in. Very, very cool slide. Gives the salute <laughs> to his dugout. Aaron Morgan will come to the plate and first hit of the day for Russell Cruz as he was 0 for 2 prior. A pop out to Caleb Stubbings at first and a fly out to Casey Campbell in right field, but Sometimes you just finally find the open green over the head of Brackle. He's in with a triple to lead things off. First pitch to Morgan swung through on the high fastball, 0-1. Not often you get to see two triples in a game. As kind of put on the burners there. Not only two triples, but out of the eight and nine hole of the lineup is even more unusual as that one misses the even the count one and one. Infield in tight, trying to hang on to that lead. Just a one-run lead for UCCS. Nice job by Richardson. Keeping that one in front as starting to see a few more faces out. A couple up on Pulpit Rock. A family out for a stroll on the Berman right field. Or a couple of hikers on their way up in left field as well. Is this one straight to Ronan Hella. The infield end's going to pay off for UCCS on the first out as right into that infield inward shift, Morgan grounds out. Early movement out in the mountain lion bullpen. It's also somebody up for CCU. It's tough to see, but especially for Caro, who... Sitting on 100 pitches as he takes a rest right now. Probably towards the end of his leash. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a new arm out there when the Cougars come back out to play some defense. 0-1-1 here on Shearn. He tries to lay the bunt down. It rolls foul. Shearn tripping out of the box. They're going to give him a few extra moments to collect himself. Almost. It was smart in terms of the runner at third for... Richardson to let that one roll foul, but if he picked it up in fair territory, it would have had an easy tag on Shearn, who was on all fours. You're going to have to throw that baseball out as you have to wipe your hands first after you lick them is a rule here in college baseball. So Philip licked his fingers, went straight to the ball, so they're going to make him try it again. Calling timeout is something in the eyes of Shearn at the plate. Dust consistently flying off of Pulpit Rock and the beautiful landscape in the background does, of course, provide some other hazards. Is that one strike three called on the outside corner, locking up Shearn with the outside heater. And after the leadoff triple... Cole with a opportunity to work out of this one. This will be the longest Phillip has gone all season. Had gone five and two thirds innings against Sioux Falls. So this one's foul. Fifth strikeout for Cole Phillip. Uh, that'll tie his previous best against Sioux Falls back in uh, back in February. And Phillip, usually one of the more relied upon arms, has struggled at times this season, but is settling in here. Mount Lion Faithful wanting a strike on that one just inside, one and one. One, one. This one lifted. This is going to get foul and out of play as it's going to drop into the Mount Lion bullpen. Whoever that is warming up 
kind of bailing out of the way to make sure he didn't get nailed. There's a dugout roof in my way, so it's tough to see who that is warming up for UCCS from our vantage point, but probably going to see the bullpens make their way into this game next couple innings. The one-two. Nice block behind the plate by Richardson. Two and two. Catcher just checking with the first base umpire, making sure that bat didn't go around, looking for any any help you can get, of course. Any time that you see a check swing, you'll usually at least see a check, even if it's obvious. The 2-2 two -two again in the dirt. As Phillip trying to induce a chase out of Bodie Flores. Floor is 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a pop out. 3 and 2 here with two outs. Runner on third is Cruz, who led off with the triple. The payoff. Ball four. That was right there at the knees, it looked like from us. Cole Phillips certainly wanted the call, kind of hanging out by the pitcher's mound, but runners on the corners now, two outs. Brings up the designated hitter, Jordan Medina. Mount Lions trying to hang on to their one-run lead. Quite a few hands on the heads there from the UCCS defense. Def Pitch has been in and out for sure all day. Yeah, kind of a coin flip on that one, and UCCS looking for the call, doesn't get it. It's important for Phillip, though, to... Shake that one off and turn the page to Medina. First pitch outside and low, ball one. How tough is it from a pitcher's perspective in that situation where you think you're out of the inning, especially in a one-run game like this? Yeah, it's super important, especially making sure that your sideline is giving you support, your coach is giving you support, but also that catcher. You know, There's a very close bond, especially in the game, that – you just want to continually pick up your pitcher and make sure he doesn't get it in his own head. 1-1. One, one. This one's lifted. This should get the job done for UCCS, but the win's going to be tough. It's going to be Sare making the catch. And the Mountain Lions kind of sweating that one a little bit. First and third. Tying run 90 feet away, but they strand two and maintain the one-run lead. We go to the bottom of the seventh stretch time at Mountain Lion Park.
So the Cougars are going to turn to Chaz Graham here as Carl makes way after going six and the sidewinder for Colorado Christian comes in a 1.80 ERA. I don't have the RMAC listings in front of me, but I have to imagine that's near the top of the conference as strike one called on the outside corner. And eighth appearance on the season for Graham. No decisions yet, but he has been effective in his appearances for the Cougars. Back-to-back -back outside strikes, 0-2 on Schultz. Yeah, go ahead. The 0-2. This one's lined into center field, leadoff base hit as Schultz down 0-2, knocks one in to the green grass. We will officially close the book on Caro. Had went six innings with 100 pitches even. Three earned runs on five hits, two walks, and pretty much a season best, seven strikeouts. A great performance limiting the UCCS to just three runs. As a bunt put down and a nice one for Brackle. It's going to cheat foul. They'll have to try it again. As Brackle trying to do a job for UCCS, but to your point, Caro, very effective. The quality start only giving up three runs in his six innings. Fortunately, not getting the run support he needs to be on the right side of things. He is the pitcher of record. If this score holds, he will take the loss for CCU. Right now, Cole Phillip in line to get the win for UCCS. 0-2 at the plate here on Aaron Brackle. Is that one? Checking back towards first base. Excuse me, it's 0-1 as I haven't cleared the pitch for, or the uh, count from the previous at-bat. I was having that thought to myself. But Graham will go back after Brackle. That one's outside, 1-1. One and one. Good eye from Brackle as it's so tough when you see such a wild windup like Graham has as a hitter. It's always abnormal to see something where the ball is just out of a different release point. That one's inside, trying to fight it off and fouling it as Brackle. Kind of an emergency swing as Brackle out and was headed, looked like for his hip, but going after it instead. Dave Hadjik at third base kind of giving him that hand sign, like take a deep breath, calm down. I know it's an uncomfortable Situation to be in as a hitter, but you got to keep your wits about you. One, two. This one's on the ground over the head of a jumping cruise. They're going to wave around Schultz to third base in a double and two leadoff base runners for UCCS. Yeah, I got a friendly bounce there, but just putting it into contact, great poise especially after maybe what appeared to be a tough swing before that is Brackle able to pick up his first hit of the day and a big crucial hit so for UCCS pair of runners out there up three to two Ronan Hella the batter first pitch to him nice Loud grunt on the mound there from Graham as he put everything he had into that one. Gets a strike call on the outside half. Sounded like Serena Williams out there trying to get the ace. 0-1, that one inside, jumping out of the way. 1-1 one and one on Hella. My lines have to be happy with getting such a good pitcher out to a tough, tough start especially after struggling in the last couple innings on the offense side. One and one on Hilla. A pitch here. This will get at least one home. Has a chance to drop in no man's land, and it does. One run is in as jogging home with the fourth run of the game with UCCS is Schultz. And kind of a bloop single 
as too far into shallow center field for Morgan to get to it, and Walton couldn't make the basket catch. You will not hear an apology from Ronan Hella, able to pick up his first hit of the day. No, uh, no reason to apologize and brings home a runner. First RBI of the game for Ronan Hella, number 13 on the season for the freshman as he also has a run scored himself. He came around to score kind of that surprise run, we'll call it, in the second inning. That was the go-ahead run. Stands as the winning run in this game as Hayden Iverson, after a ball was lost in the sun by, uh, it was Shern out there in left field. This one's hit well to right field, has a chance to drop fair. And it cheats a, just a few feet foul, unfortunately, for UCCS, but... Ronan Hella putting together a nice day at the plate now, one for one officially. 0-2 at the plate, though, here on Iverson. He's got a pair of doubles, an RBI himself, as we mentioned. He was thrown out at third. I still think he was safe personally in the second inning, but I don't get to make the decisions. He's got another chance at one here. That one's off the wall. Jogging in to score is Brackle around third and in to score the play at the plate. He dropped the ball. Two RBI double Hayden Iverson and the Mountain Lions break out to a four run lead. How often are you going to see a three trip, three double game? Excuse me. Hayden Iverson coming up clutch for the Mountain Lions. Lots of action here. Bottom of the seventh inning for UCCS. Another double for Hayden Iverson as he continues to produce for the Mountain Lions. Third RBI of the day. And he's up to 19 ribbies on his season. ERA is going to be on its way up for Chaz Graham in this one. Coming in with just that 1.8. The Mountain Lions getting the best of him here. So you see the replay there, just dropping in between the two outfielders. And credit to Ronan Hella making the outside slide. Tough play for Thompson, couldn't secure the throw. The Mount Lions up four. One and one at the plate on Sayre. He's got an RBI double himself. That was to get the scoring started after Iverson let off the game with a double offensively for the Mount Lions, the bottom half of the first inning. The check on Iverson, but they go to the plate instead. This one's down the line, fair ball again. This one's into the corner. In to score the fourth run of the inning, Hayden Iverson for the second time today. Sarah and Iverson go back to back with doubles. That's five straight hits for UCCS as that one was just drilled down the line. Catcher will come out and have a talk with the sidewinder. Big inning here for UCCS. Still not an out in this inning for the Cougars as Graham, who's typically the go-to reliever for CCU, unable to get an out. In the first five batters for UCCS, four of them already in to score. Amble has the real ability to turn on the pitches. We saw that early on in this game, facing a favorable matchup with the righty, who's clearly shook here. See how he responds to Campbell, and Campbell, that one hangs up. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did. What a play. Or did he make the catch? Still on first base is Campbell. It looked like he came up with it, but... Campbell staying on first, so I guess it was a trap. Never really saw a indication, but a single it's going to be for Casey Campbell. Hold on. Yeah, here comes the manager for CCU. They're going to talk about it. We Paul see. Koss comes out. We didn't really see any signal from any of the umpires. I thought I, yeah, I thought I saw the second base umpire. That's Cameron Monaco signal out, and he does. So it is a catch out there for Sheeran. 
And that's the first out of the inning for UCCS. So Campbell uh, was a, a very good play out there for sure, and you can't shrug that off as he had to come in and slide to make the catch. Second time he's done that today. And it's one on and one out for Caleb Stubbings. That one's left over the plate. Stubbings just a little late on it. It's going to bounce out of play. 0-1. That was pretty much identical to the play Shearn made earlier on in this game. Couldn't really tell if he uh, trapped it or caught it, but it'll be one away, and the pitcher will not apologize for, especially on that hard hit of a ball. And... Cameron Monaco at second base had uh, he made a quick I thought I saw him make an out signal but it was quick because then he had to pay attention to the back throw to second base there was some confusion out there Campbell never saw it so he stayed put on first base which was the right thing to do from him don't want to assume that you are out ever so you just stayed put CCU able to get the out again wasting that one out of play one and two now on Stubbings Got a single in this game to push his hit streak to six games. Graham already up to 18 pitches thus far. Thrown 14 strikes, but CCS has been able to do some damage. So that one misses two and two. Colorado School of Mines takes game one against the Mount Lion softball team, two to one. We'll have game two getting started in just a few minutes across a ravine. A little bit of a daylight play, but they go to the plate, and again, fouling it back, Caleb Stubbings. Starting to look like McCauley Sayre in the fifth inning a little bit here. Still got about 16 pitches to foul off before he gets to that point, but... Making sure he sees his opportunities. Another 2-2. This one's fought off. This one could drop in shallow left. Going out, and it does. Again, moving up to third base. Good base running from McCauley Sayre. Taking the opportunity to move up. Also up on the throw to second base is Stubbings. And UCCS has a pair of runners in scoring position, one out in the inning for Tyler Richardson. And you can't really say that CCU has made a ton of errors, just one, but man, those softly hit pop-ups into that right behind the where the grass starts has been a real problem today. Smart base running from Sarah. It's a single and moving up on the throw to second base is Stubbings. And Richardson takes strike one. Mount Lions catcher has an RBI single. He brought home Sayre for the second run to tie the game at two in the first inning. 0-1 inside. Richardson knows where those edges of the zone lie as the catcher... The day for UCCS, one and one. Graham has put a couple of those pitches inside on when he faces a righty and able to get some swings and stubbings in that last at bat, able to just kind of fight it off and put it into play, and that's been the name of the game here. Richardson was ready to fire on that one if need be. He knew that that outside part of the zone's been extended a couple times, but. Left that one out smartly, two and one. Another offering. This one's knocked through the right side. Both runs are going to score a two RBI single for Tyler Richardson, and he's up to three RBIs. Just kind of able to poke that one through, the infield in, unable to have the space to make a play. UCCS will... Potentially face a new pitcher here. And it looks like they're going to chase Graham. He's only able to get one out. We're going to take a step aside. 
Mountain Lions exploding with offense. Six runs already in. Only one out in the bottom of the seventh. Pitching change. Johnny Tewinkle that will come on for the Cougars here. One out in the seventh inning as Chaz Graham only able to get one out in his outing. Not what he was looking for by any stretch of the imagination. As this one's hit well into left field. Going back, Sheeran at the wall. He's going to make the catch. Almost. Almost for Vander Hodges. Would have been his first big fly of the season. And moving up is Richardson. The ball got passed. And Richardson, with no timeout called, moves up to second. CCC, CCU, excuse me. That's, that's frustrating, especially when you're just kicking the ball around. Got to make sure you hold on to that. Richardson, smart base running there. First stolen bag of the season for the Mount Lions catcher. As that one fouled straight back, 0-1. It's back up to the plate for the second time this inning. Keegan Schultz who led off with the single. Smart base running from Tyler Richardson. Just always paying attention. That's super important in these games. Mount Lions bat around here, 0-2 on Keegan Schultz. The 0-2 pitch, this one straight at shortstop, up with it, Walton. He'll end the misery for the Cougars as T. Winkle comes on, gets the first two batters he faces. But six runs in, it is a seven-run lead all of a sudden for UCCS. They lead it nine to two. The mountain line can travel up to 370 miles. Located primarily in North America, these majestic creatures can traverse a large variety of terrain. There are, of course, some natural barriers. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion.
As T. Winkle comes in for the Cougars, that shuts the book on Chaz Graham. He goes just a third of an inning, seven hits, six runs, all earned. No walks or strikeouts. He faced eight Mountain Lions. And tough outing for Graham. Definitely the worst of his season so far. Graham has been exceptional this season. Three innings, the most he's pitched thus far, and only given up a couple of runs, a couple of hits. Two hits was the most coming into this game, although he has pitched relatively short appearances. And like you mentioned, a tough outing for the sidewinder. Yeah, he'd given up seven hits all season long. He gave up seven hits just in that half inning as he comes in. That one's outside. One and two now on Gabe Ramos at the plate to lead things off for the Cougars here. Their half of the eighth inning, that one just below the knees, two and two. And I think we were both a little surprised to see Cole Phillip back out on the mound. But like you mentioned, 90 pitches so far. Three and two here is it's on his way up in the pitch count category, but still very efficient. Lead off walk, though, to Ramos. There is action in the pen for UCCS, so I imagine if there's any sort of trouble here for Phillip with the seven run support difference. And here comes Dave Hadjik. I think that's going to be it for Cole Phillip. Let's see who it is over there. For UCCS, that's John Soto warming up for UCCS. They're going to talk to Phillip, but this is kind of the MO for Dave Hadjik. He's going to let Soto get a couple more pitches in as he uses up his mound visit timer. And once Daniel Muth, the home plate umpire, goes to break things up, he'll call to the bullpen and bring in Soto. We'll see how that plays out this time around. But... For Phillip, even with the leadoff walk here in the eighth, an effective outing if this is the end. And they are going to point out to the bullpen. Pitching change here and a round of applause for Cole Phillip. What a performance for the Mountain Lions starter. We got a pitching change here, but definitely the strongest outing of the year. Phillip. Had only gone five and two thirds, I say only. A great performance, but this performance from the right hander was just exceptional. Able to get a number of one, two, three innings, and he's not known for not letting people get hits, but today, just exceptional. Definitely the strongest performance he's seen, and put his team up in a great position to win this game John Soto will come on and for Soto he has struggled at times this season for UCCS was a starter at times in his collegiate career has moved to the back end of the bullpen and now kind of the long relief guy for UCCS and he'll come in with a 12.54 ERA that's Kind of that number that he's struggled with, 0-1 in decisions on his year. This will be his ninth appearance in games for UCCS, but he has quite the cushion coming into this game as Cole Phillip doing the heavy lifting for him and the Mountain Lions offense exploding in the bottom of the seventh inning. And especially from the Cougars' perspective uh, here, Brian, kind of taught me to... When you come in, you use the word professional when we were talking during the break of how this game was going and kind of that explosion of offense. How do you cope with that? Yeah, like you mentioned earlier today, just being able to string runs together, being able to string, hit, string hits together, so important and so dangerous. You, you saw it in the bottom of the seventh there with I think it was five or six straight hits and six runs scored. Not a lot of runners left on base, and yeah, just a great performance all around from both teams. So Soto will come on, and the first time we've seen the bullpen into play here.
It's a day for UCCS. A couple of Mountain Lions got up to start to warm up in that one run situation, but Cole Phillip up to the task. Not pitching in an easy situation, especially he had traffic in the uh, top of the sixth inning, a hit by pitch and a walk with two outs, was able to come back and get the fly out. A leadoff triple to Russell Cruz, able to strand him there. But he'll give way here to John Soto, and Major Maiden will be the first to face him. Great name. <laughs> As we said for Soto, 0 and 1 indecisions on his year. It would take quite the Herculean effort from CCU to come back from this deficit with just six outs to work with. Or excuse me, yeah, just six outs to work with. Stick with my prior math. As that one in there, in the outside corner, one and one. Swung on and missed. Nice pitch there to work ahead. One and two. Good pitchers count here for Soto. I think this at bat will be pretty crucial for Soto moving forward. That one's outside. Two and two. And Soto can really reach back and grab that extra velocity as you saw in that one. Putting a little something extra on that heater. Misses outside. Two and two. Runner on first is... Gabe Ramos, he led off with the walk on a full count. As this one's up, that's going to get out of play behind home plate. Richardson kind of chasing back there to make sure that it was out of play. That will stay even at two. Those are the at-bats where you tend to see sports center highlights when catchers or people down the line make those plays. Not quite that time. Uh, inside breaking Ooh. ball just misses the knees. Three and two on Soto. You can see him wiping his knees off. Thought he had the pitch there. The movement kind of double crossed Tyler Richardson a little bit. Kind of broke back more than he thought it would. That kind of confusion you see from the catcher sometimes negates the call your way from an umpire, but... Three and two instead, outside ball four. So a leadoff pair of runners here with back-to-back -back walks bring up Luke Thompson. Yeah, that pitch that could have been called a strike. The umpire was definitely hearing it from Mountain Lion fans putting up his hand to make sure they know he's in charge. So Luke Thompson. Comes in, a single and a walk. He was doubled up on that highlight reel double play up the middle from UCCS. He walked his last time up in the sixth inning, was stranded at first. 0-1 on him here. Soto checks to second base, deals to the plate. Again, the fastball right down the middle, overpowers him. 0-2. Soto not afraid to... Give it all he's got, put it right down the middle, and make the batters make a play. Soto set the 0-2 outside, looking for a chase. Too far out to get one. One and two again. One-two. Strike three called on the inside half. Soto gets the call this time around and out number one and a strikeout victim number one for Soto is Luke Thompson. Yeah, that looked awfully similar to the pitch that uh, Maiden was able to walk on. As that pitch has got some great movement on it. Yeah, Soto can really spin the ball when he's got good command, and it looks like he's got that command so far today. Gabe Ramos at second base. They've looked over. He's got one stolen base on his season. Would be surprised to see him try and take third. Strike two. That one beautifully placed on the outside half. And working ahead again is Soto. 
Soto comes in, 2.46 whip. He's already got two, or excuse me, a walk in this inning. So right about that average, but usually a walk and a hit in an inning, that's not going to do too much damage to you. So see how he comes back. One and two here on Caden Walton. Again, checks to second, deals to the plate. The one, two, this one's slapped into right field. Coming in, Campbell will make the catch. Not tagging at second base was Rama, so he'll have to return, as would have been a pretty easy throw as working in was Campbell to get the fly out. But runners on. Soto has a chance to work out of it here with two outs. Well, like you mentioned, I think that first batter was very important where Yes, he did walk him, but he thought he struck him out. He made great pitches, and I think that can make it make or break where you're like, hey, how do I bounce back? Well, we saw that same situation with Luke Thompson at the plate in the sixth inning with Cole Phillip, and Phillip thought he got away with strike three. It was called ball four instead. Thompson walks, comes back, and gets Walton to fly out, and... We, we talked about it in that moment, the importance of turning the page as a pitcher. As strike two, again, the Heat are working for John Soto, 0-2 for the third straight batter. Owen oh 2 two outs, two runners on for the Cougars, both walked. And that one's wasted foul, do it again, Owen oh 2 Couple of full counts turning into walks to start the inning. Gabe Ramos faced Cole Phillip, was the last batter of his day. Soto comes on, works the count full on Major Maiden, ends up sending him to first where he remains, gets the next two. 0-2 now on Walton. The pitch. Line to first base. A diving catch. Caleb Stubbings. A pair of leadoff walks. Go for not for the Cougars. They're both stranded. And the Mountain Lions maintain their seven-run lead on the way to the ninth or bottom of the eighth, excuse me, when we return. Aaron Brackle to lead things off here. The Mount Lions half of the eighth inning as an explosion of runs has them up nine to two after six in the previous frame for UCCS. One and zero here on Brackle. That one just misses outside. Two and zero. And Brackle, who is one for three with a double, a run scored. A strikeout and a flyout will lead things off here for UCCS. Strike one called on the outside half, two and one. And Brackle will have to begin to battle here. Breaking ball swung through. Nice movement on that one. And two and one on the Mountain Lions center fielder. 
Still out there on the mound is Johnny T. Winkle. And that one swung through, dropped third, but tagged out at the plate is Brackle. And he's down on strikes to start the inning. After that huge seventh inning from the mound lines. That'll bring up Ronan Hella. Hella firing on the first pitch he sees. He's behind 0 and 1. Wind picking up here. Still blowing in from right field. That one catches the outside corner. 0 and 2. Another foul ball here as Twinkle has come in and pitched well. He's only faced four mountain lines thus far, but the previous three before Hella, who's still in progress, he got out. Another 0-2. Swung on and missed strike three on the high heater and back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning for Twinkle. Yeah, and as important as this game is and making sure that they limit the damage, you got to think about going into the next game, getting that momentum. CCU is going to want to finish this game out strong. Really, except for Chaz Graham, who came in, gave up seven hits, six runs for the Cougars. We've seen top-notch pitching in this game from all others as this one's on the ground. Diving just past Walton. As a leadoff single, or excuse me, a two-out single for Iverson in the leadoff spot. I'll bring up McCauley Sayre. Look like Caden Walton might get to that baseball. Definitely had his glove in the right spot, but dropped through. That looks like it'll be the fourth hit today from Hayden Iverson. That'll be a tie his season best against Sioux Falls back in February. He's also got three doubles on the day. That'll be a season best as well. We were talking about home runs from Hayden Iverson, and one of his two home runs came in that game against Sioux Falls. One and one here on McCulley Sayre, who's had quite the day himself, a pair of doubles. Two RBIs and two runs scored for the Mount Lions second baseman. This one's going to be in play right towards the screen and not quite able to make the play as Maiden coming in from first base, kind of having to shield himself with that kind of knee-high wall there below the netting. And it's one and two, a new life at the plate for McCauley Sayre. Yeah, that one came right down on the net. Tough to play it, especially when you got the wind blowing back and forth and unable to come up with the catch. So one and two at the plate on Sarah with two outs. Off with the pitch at first was Hayden Iverson with the foul ball. He'll have to go back. He didn't get the memo on the foul ball as he was standing on second. Cameron Monica, or excuse me, that's Caden Gamore out there in the middle of the infield and uh, remind him to return to first. Another one, too. This one gets by, and this time Iverson will be able to move up. Wild pitch for T. Winkle. And two and two at the plate on Sayre. Well, like you mentioned, you never want to leave if you're not sure. Just stay where you are, see where things play out. Give Iverson the benefit of the doubt. See who's catching his breath for an extra moment. 2-2 two -two pitch. This one's hit well into center field. Coming in, and it's going to drop in front of Morgan. In to score is Iverson with the 10th run of the game. And another RBI for McCauley Sayre. That wild pitch proving crucial there. As not sure Iverson would have been able to make it around the bases, but Able to tack on some more insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. Certainly would have been off with the contact with two outs, but it would have been tough to get all the way around from first on 
That shallow hit uh, just dropping in front. This one's going to get through. Sarah's going to stop at second base as that throw goes all the way through to third. Smart play stopping Sarah because I don't think he would have made it before that baseball. Strong throw from Ramos out of right field. But another pair of two out base runners for UCCS brings up Stubbings. G. Winkle started off so strong with those two strikeouts. Looked like he was dealing, and then Mountain Lions respond with three singles in a row. First pitch to Stubbings, fouled back to the screen for strike one. It's wind still blowing from right to left as that American flag in left center field on display. The 0-1, that one low. A Bach called instead, it looks like. So 0 and 1, the count will stay. The pitch will not count. I didn't really see. Did you see what went on there with T. Winkle? Couldn't quite make it out, but maybe started his movement and then reset. See if we got a replay. One and one. I don't. I didn't see it. It was either that or he didn't come all the way set and just kind of moved through. One of the two. Either way. Second and third now, the situation. Stubbings, one and one at the plate. This one, high chopper, right side, or excuse me, left side. Cruz up with it. He'll throw out Stubbings at first. That ends the inning. But the Mount Lions get one more run. They're up eight. They are three outs away from a win here. We'll see how it plays out when we return. Back here at Mount Lion Park, top of the ninth inning. Mount Lion's up eight. For my partner, Brian Gein, and I'm Jake Ross. We appreciate you being with us here for game one. We hope you join us for the second half of our double header as well as we'll have a seven inning game to cap off the afternoon about 20 minutes after this game concludes. As ball one is outside at the plate. Aaron Morgan leading things off. Nine, one, and two due up for the Cougars. Down to their final three outs. 1-0. That one right down the outside part of the plate. Soto evens the count one and one. I kind of want to hear your thoughts, especially with Phillips' performance so far and Soto as well. What does that kind of do for a team when you're able to have such a strong performance, especially before four straight games? Well, I think that that seventh inning is really what defined this one for UCCS. You just kind of have to keep that feeling of that big explosion of offensive success inside of you. Kind of bring it with you, if you can, into the second game. Ride that momentum out, and for CCU, kind of the opposite. You want to turn the page, kind of reset. Really, it was a great game played for for CCU. A couple of mental lapses here or there, but great pitching with the exception of that one relief from Chaz and 
you just kind of have to lean on your pitchers again, turn the page, and and move on to game two as three and two here on the leadoff batter Morgan as Soto trying to secure the win for UCCS. That one bounce. This is in fair territory. Might be a tough play, and it's going to be an infield hit for Morgan to lead things off. They definitely don't ask how. They just ask how many. They're able to get that hit there, and CCU starts off with a runner. Second hit of the day for Morgan. He had that two-out triple in the second inning. Ended up getting stranded at third base as Phillip clamped down. As that one all fouled back for strike one as Sheeran, who is one for three, excuse me, as a hit-by-pitch in his second at-bat doesn't count. 0-1 on him here. Runner goes at first base, the throw to second, not going to be in time. So a swipe bag for Aaron Morgan for him, his fourth stolen base of the season. Yeah, we saw it on that two-out triple that you mentioned, just that speed that he's able to run the bases with, take any advantage they can get. Owen 2 at the plate. That one in the left-hander's batter's box. Quite the block from Tyler Richardson. Not only getting all the way out, but moving his arm to the other side of his body to get his glove on it and keep Morgan at second. Just one of my favorite parts of the game is seeing those catchers, especially dealing with heat and an uncomfortable position and just such athletic plays. One-two pitch. That one's going to be dropped. They're going to... Look back, Morgan at second base. Smart play from Richardson to make sure he doesn't move up. And a strikeout is out number one on Sheeran to start the outs in the ninth inning. Scoring note for you as well. Earlier I shared in that big seventh inning that Tyler Richardson stole second. It was actually an error on the pitcher, that was Chaz Graham at the time. So no stolen base for Tyler Richardson, still looking for his first, and this second error of the day for CCU. 0-1 here. That one swung on and missed again inside heater. Overpowers Flores 0-2. O2 pitch, that one outside, moving up to third and not drawing a throw. Smart play over there at Vander Hodges to throw his arms up to signal for Richardson to eat that throw. And one and two with a run 90 feet away. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference, though, as the scoreboard stands. It'll be a wild pitch for Soto. One, two. That one's high. Two and two. A little bit of movement in the bullpen area for the Mountain Lions, but no doubt Dave Hadjik will want Soto to finish this one up. Kind of willing himself to third base is Morgan with the stolen base and then moving up on the wild pitch. This is going to get the run home. Coming in and making the catch is Campbell. They're going to try and throw him out, and unable to relay it is Stubbings in the infield. And a run does score 10-3, to three, our new score. But two outs down to their final gasp. Jordan Medina is CCU. Casey Campbell has been excellent in right field. A lot of tough plays with the wind, but able to... Record five putouts in right field. Not something you see all the time, but Campbell has just been a a real asset out in right field. Campbell has quite the arm. Certainly can make that play a little bit behind him in the throw off line having to be cut off because of that. As that one's in for strike one on Medina, evening the count at one.
Curveball up and in, two and one now. Soto tries to record the final out in this game for UCCS. That one just misses outside, three and one. Efficient day for the Mount Lions pitching staff. Just two pitchers have seen the rubber as Phillip going seven. One and two-thirds so far from Soto. That one strike. Three and two, two outs, top of the ninth. Usually in the dream scenario for a hitter, you're not down 10 to three, but always want to produce in this situation from a hitting standpoint, see if Medina can do it. And he walks. It's always the dream situation of young ball players across the world. 3 2, bottom nine. This time, gap a little bit bigger, but always the best moments. It'll bring up Ramos, who's 0 for 2 with a couple of walks, a ground out to Stubbings at first, and a strikeout looking. And he fouls that one out of play, 0-1. Oh Dean at first does have a stolen base on his season. Quite the healthy lead as that one's in there for strike two. Soto with the chance to slam the door on CCU in game one. The 0-2, that one was right down the middle. Ready for it was Ramos. Long foul out of play, 0-2, the count will stay. And a pretty good lead at first from Medina. Another 0-2, right at Stubbings, he makes the catch. Ball game over the Mountain Lions win at 10 to 3. For the Mountain Lions, Cole Phillip will pick up the win. He will move up to two and or excuse me, three and one on his season for the Cougars. Caro will take the loss, dropping to 0 and 5. Or excuse me, actually, because of that third run, the the Loss is going to go to Chaz Graham. And so for UCCS, they pick up the win and a big one to start off this season absolutely. or this series, I should say. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be huge going forward. Mountain Lions improve to 11 and 16 on the year. They'll be 3 and 6 in the RMAC and improve to an even 500 at home, which is definitely big to start off this series. Colorado Christian drops to 8. 17 and 1, 5 and 8 in conference, and extends their losing skid to five games, but an opportunity to pull it back going forward today. And UCCS, who has struggled in conference play thus far, trying to pick up that momentum, got that hard fought win on Tuesday against Northern Colorado, win a blowout here in game one. I'm going to go ahead and say the man of game one was Hayden Iverson doing the Heavy lifting, three doubles, four RBIs, and two runs scored for Iverson in game one. But that'll do it for us here in game one. We'll have game two about 20 minutes or so away as you see the highlights roll past as we finish up here. For my partner, Brian Geenan, I'm Jake Ross. For our crew and everyone here, Mount Lion Athletics, thank you for joining us for the opening game of this series. We'll be back in about half an hour, 20 minutes or so for game two. Don't go too far. Mount Lions win game one.
GCCS gives me the freedom I need.